Hello, Rob from Fountain Pen Journey with a review of the Kaigaloo 316 in the stone colour. Now, this fountain pen is yet another homage to the Parker Duofold Centennial and costs a little bit more than the Jinhao Centennial fountain pens. Um, this is the cracked ice version, very similar as you can see. I mean, you compare the two side by side, there really isn't a huge amount in it. The Moonman M600 is yet another Parker Duofold Centennial lookalike, um, and they're all very cheap, affordable fountain pens, which are available in some really, really nice colors. So let's move the Jinhao out of the way and concentrate on the Kaigaloo 316. Now first off, you'll notice how nice this acrylic is. Very, very chatoyant. Um, I mean, it, it really, really catches the light. You've got this wonderful chatoyancy all throughout the pen. There are, of course, some darker areas, non-chatoyant areas, but it, overall it's a nice grey-blue coloured fountain pen in this stone colour version. We'll have a look at the cap and right at the top we've got the Kaigaloo sort of kangaroo logo up there which is a nice dual cap it's actually really really quite nice to see that rather than just something plain bunged in the top. Black finial there's a ring up here with a gold-ish coloured clip it's quite tight couple of cap bands which don't actually protect the base of the cap which I actually I prefer cap bands to be at the base rather than just some embellishment further further up because it just gives you that extra bit of uh, protection from chipping things like that um, and as you can see it's a nice straight ish there's a bit of a taper straight ish fountain pen with another goldish coloured ring and a black plastic finial down here. So it's a nice looking fountain pen. I mean you've seen it compared to the Jinhao Centennial so it's about the same and it's about the same compared to the Lamy All Star. Unscrew cap one two nearly three turns so a little bit more than the gin house centennial fountain pens so we, we are getting into slightly longer unscrewing capping times if you know what i mean translucent acrylic there we go and screw down in the bottom there so we have got raw metal section black plastic section nice duo duo tone medium nib in this fountain pen. These are available in fine medium, uh, fine and medium nibs. Flared out black plastic section at the bottom there which is good. Very comfortable to hold. Nice nice size. Not too big though. I must admit some people may find holding it further up you feel that there is a bit of a step up just there where the threads begin. The threads are not sharp at all, they're really quite smooth, unnoticeable, in fact really can't feel them and there is a, yet another small step up there which is not sharp and it's a very comfortable size to hold in the hand. Posting, it posts very shallowly and it's very very back weighted, very long, not a pen to post with, very much like the gin here. But it's a nice looking fountain pen. It comes with a standard international cartridge, uh, sorry, converter fitted. It's a standard international cartridges and converters. Um, as you can see, there is some translucency to this acrylic, so you can actually see the metal threads in there. And the converter, though, obviously, with this sort of material it's you can't really see the ink level so it's not that translucent nice comfortable fountain pen to hold and let's just have a quick look again at this beautiful stone material which is really really nice really chatoyant try and get it in different lights for you 
very very attractive and well 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 worth the money nice affordable Chinese fountain pen but of course the most important thing is how does it actually write so here we go with the rodeo pad now the gin house centennial i've reviewed that before and i will be doing more reviews of it in due course in different colors because some of them have issues let's just say issues hit the subscribe button turn on all notifications you'll be notified of when those videos go live and you'll hear about the issues that i've had but let's have a look at this now this is a bit of a hard start because i've been uncapping the pen and let's just get the ink going a little bit there now you can see i haven't had this hard starting issue with the gin house centennials but kaigaloo 316 now you can see there's a lot of skipping going on there I'm not going to blame the pen necessarily because it could also be the ink because I am using a, um, a different ink in this pen but overall I'd say that there is a little bit more of a tendency to hard start you can hear that squeaking there it's, it's just not as good this is the first actual time I've actually had this problem so what I'm going to do is just going to prime the feed a tiny bit because I want to be able to show you I mean it is this is a relatively minor problem I wouldn't say that this is a reason not to uh, not to purchase one of these but it's not a great start Kaigaloo 316 and it, is, it really is skipping and this is the stone colour the medium nib And it's really starting to write properly now and we'll talk about this in a minute because it's it this is important oops that's me it's wet medium nib it's wet and it, it it works this issue with the skipping and the hard starting is the first time I've actually experienced it, it, it experienced that to this extent with this pen now I haven't written with this pen for about four days so I know some people would say well you know some fountain pens just won't write after four days of non-use I haven't found that with many many modern fencing pens recently that I've bought uh, but this is a little bit a little bit of an issue however this nib is that, that skip was me this nib is smooth it actually does right really really lovely um, so don't let those hard starts put you off it is something that I think you need to be aware of the gin house centennial the nib on that has feedback this kaigaloo nib is much much smoother but as you could hear perhaps up here there is a little bit of squeaking tiny bit of squeaking which suggests to me perhaps a little bit of over polishing which would not help the ink flow particularly but other than that straight out of the box I found this pen to write really really lovely writes really well I'm happy with it and I would not take any micro mesh or mess around with it too much at all um, which is really really good I, I haven't done that with the gin house centennial fountain pens that I've got um, but you know this hard starting business skipping issue right at the beginning is something that I haven't really been too aware of until now but once you're writing with it it seems to have sorted itself out and I've written with this pen 
pretty extensively, long periods, and never had any issues. The ink flow is great. It doesn't um, doesn't suffer from any ink starvation or anything like that, and it lays down ink perfectly well enough. Lots and lots of ink. So I, I really do like this medium nib. I'm not going to say that this business up here with the hard starting and skipping is a bad thing at all. This is it's just a nuance. Um, as a review more of these because I like to write with these pens for a long time. I will move over to another one of the colours, see how that nib writes, see if that's the same, see if it's consistent between the, uh, the same model. Um, we'll just talk briefly about this ink and I shall just double check I'm looking at the right one which is another one of the diamine iridescence or I think it's iridescence they call it this is the newest one diamine herbert's named after their dog or somebody's dog and um, this is once again yet another one of diamine's sheening inks that happens to uh, happens to be dark blue they keep releasing dark blue inks and you can actually even on this rhodia paper see that red sheen a lot of red sheen up here and this also could be contributing to uh, to this hard starting business because I do find that some of the diamine sheening inks or sheening inks not as much as shimmer inks obviously because they're full of particulates but the sheening inks sometimes do tend to create this sort of heavy sheen in the beginning when you first write with the pen which then starts to uh, starts to decrease and I think, I think overall if I get this you can see there is a lot of heavy red sheening which then starts to peter out and you can see more of the blue color coming through now even though there is some red sheen in there so i'm not going to blame the pen entirely for that and in all honesty i'm not really that bothered i i've written with this pen for a very very long time and it, it, it's it's a beautifully smooth, nice writing nib, and the pen's lovely. It's a nice weight to it. it looks really, really good. So I'm actually very, very happy with this Kaigaloo three one six. There are some new colours for twenty twenty one around. Uh, this is one of them. This stone colour, which really is quite lovely, and I think it befits the. Uh, you know, when you look at some of the Chinese fountain pens which are coming out which are of much higher price and they just don't look as good as this I think if you're after a Parker Dewar fold homage then the Kaigaloo 316 in stone is actually a really lovely looking fountain pen just twiddle it around a bit more so you can see the she the uh, chatoyancy there so there we have it thank you very much for watching I hope you found it was uh, a useful review and I shall see you next time bye